The Gospel of the Lord. Well, something that I do every day, I think it's kind of important, and you probably do the very same thing, particularly for all of the adults present here in church. We probably do this, and it's important every day for us to do this, but sometimes it's also maybe one of the more troubling things that we do every day. We watch the news. We watch the news. And uh, I suppose... It is very easy lately, especially as we look at this past year, to come to a feeling that maybe evil is winning within the world. What have we seen? Repeatedly, really, this year and far beyond, of course, we know the war in the Ukraine continues to take place and Over 10,000 civilians have passed and 18,500 wounded. And this year, in recent months, the war in Palestine and and Israel, and yesterday on the news, after I was done biting my nails watching the last seconds of the football game, uh, we learned that over 20,000 have lost their lives. Innocent people, really, not the intelligentsia or world powers, but people like you and me, families. And uh, we see acts of terrorism and mass shootings and most recently on college campus in Las Vegas and one young man who was interviewed the news that day said, you know, it's, it's every day that I come to this campus that I live in fear, live in fear that something like this would happen. And we see assaults on human life and certainly challenges in our diocese and in the church and probably a decline of active practice of faith across the board and uh, challenges for families struggling to get along. Well, now that I've said all of that, you know, Merry Christmas. (laughs) You know, well, why do I raise that? I raise that uh, not to be the uh, Christmas bubble breaker by any means or, or to deplete all of the Yuletide joy. That's not my, my intent in any shape or form. But rather, it's quite the opposite, that in our lives we have many things to take hope and joy in. Every day in our personal family life we can probably take hope and joy now. Early this morning, I received this photograph in my text that should be there. Now, isn't that an awesome picture? Now, I admit I'm a little biased because that's my great nephew. And uh, he's here in church with us, too. And uh, isn't that a beautiful picture to take great hope and joy in? Hmm? Isn't it? And uh, earlier in the week, I received a, a text. Many of you know Tom Ahern, one of his grandchildren, Quinn. This uh, other picture, isn't that a beautiful picture of her looking at the manger? Hmm? You know, great hope, great joy in our own family life, in our own circles of friends, in our neighborhoods. And uh, that hope and that joy is very important and very good, but what we really celebrate today and the reason why we have hope Really, the reason we can rejoice this Christmas day is because of the birth of Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus Christ that we have true, lasting, permanent hope and joy. And what is it that we hear in the Gospel? Very important words. In these words we heard at Mass earlier today, when it was the fourth Sunday of Advent, just a few hours ago, And it's part of the, I suppose, entire Christmas story. We hear these words over and over again. Do not be afraid. 
What do we hear when the angel Gabriel comes to Mary? Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. And what do we hear in the little part of the Christmas story at Mass this evening? The words to Joseph, Do not be afraid about taking Mary into your home as your wife. If we read a little bit further, we know the angels will go to Shepherd's Field and uh, speak to the shepherds and say, Do not be afraid. We come with uh, tidings of great joy. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Words spoken over and over again in the Scripture. And words spoken as we heard in the Gospel today to Joseph. And I don't think we can always fully appreciate the crisis he must have been in at that moment in time in his life. The concern he had when the angel spoke to him in that dream, do not worry about taking Mary as your wife. Do not be afraid. What else do we hear in that particular Gospel? God is with us. Emmanuel. God is with us. We're reminded that we have hope And we're reassured that God will never abandon His people. It's important for us to remember. God will never abandon you. God will never abandon me. God will never abandon His people. And we hear in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we've been hearing from Isaiah all through the season of of Advent, of course. But what do we hear particular today? Quote, "...nation shall behold your vindication." And all the kings, your glory. Well, this uh, particular line is a mystical reference, really, to the growth. The growth. Not shrinking. The growth of the church. And the conversion of many kings and many nations to the family of the church. You and I are part of that growth. Why are we here today? A couple thousand years ago, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and unfortunately in Bethlehem today, in Palestine, they are not able to celebrate as they normally do. The very soil where Jesus was born, not able to celebrate as you and I are celebrating today. But from that moment to today, do not underestimate the growth, the strength of the church. And right here at St. Gregory is the tremendous growth and strength, not only of our parish family and family of parishes, but the growth and strength of the church as a whole. We have tremendous growth. A couple of weeks ago on Sunday, I received 14 adults who as adults are desiring to become baptized and part of the Catholic faith. In a time period of great challenge within the diocese and the church, these men and women are coming forward in faith. Great hope and great joy. And in addition to the 14 who are desiring to become baptized and part of the church here in our parish, we have two men preparing for the priesthood. Andy Erdman, who's you know, kind of smoking us out with all the incense here, you know, he's one of the two, and I don't think Lorenzo is singing. Well, I can't see the choir through the tree, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, two men, in a time period of great challenge, we have two men of our parish coming forward to serve and desire in seminary formation to be ordained a priest. We have one among us who is studying to become a permanent deacon, Rick Weil. And we have one young lady of our parish, Kristen Filk, who I think is there, who has begun her applications for religious life. Tremendous growth. Tremendous joy. Tremendous hope right in our midst. And uh, we're given the strong image in Isaiah, not only of the growth of the church, but we're also given hope and being reminded that we are in a nuptial union with God. We hear that very clearly. So you, myself, the church, we are the bride of Christ. And we are in that nuptial union with the Lord. And so, 
We know that Christ the Bridegroom will never abandon you or abandon me. Great hope and great joy. And what do we hear? We're filled with joy and hope to know what? That God delights in you. God delights in you. It's very important. We heard that in the, the reading today. And so often I think we have a, an image of God that we've got to plead with Him for something. Or we have an image of, that the, the good Lord might be angry with us and we kind of got to make Him happy again, you know. Or we have this image maybe that God is disappointed at times with us. But what are we reminded of this Christmas Day? The Lord delights in you. Just as a parent delights in a newborn child, with even greater joy, the Lord delights in you. Christmas, and this Christmas and this Gospel, we're given St. Joseph once again to look at. And what is it we learn from St. Joseph? First of all, silent obedience. Now, silence is you know, something I'm not good at. You all know that after 11 years together. Silent obedience. Joseph responds to God with silent obedience when he is visited and spoken to. And again, I don't think we can quantify how difficult of a time it must have been for Joseph. He's planning to divorce Mary quietly. He knows the child is not his. He's confused, I'm sure, and wondering what to do can't even begin to imagine what, as a human being, Joseph must have felt like. But in the midst of that struggle, what does he do? He he commends the situation to prayer. And the Lord speaks to him. And the Lord speaks to him and says, you know, do not be afraid about taking Mary as your wife. Earlier today, at one of the Masses, well, two of them actually, Deacon Greg said the following question. He said in his homily, where would we be if Mary didn't say yes? Well, similarly, where would we be right now if Joseph didn't say yes? Where would we be if Joseph did not say yes? His yes is very important because the Messiah had to be born of the house and lineage of King David, Joseph's own family. Salvation really depended on Joseph's answer. Salvation depended on Joseph's quiet fidelity to God's work. And for you and for me in this place and time, God's work depends on our quiet fidelity to his plan. This Christmas we reflect upon those ways that the Lord is calling you and me, right here, right now, to live that life of faith and to quietly be obedient, to quietly respond regardless of the questions or challenges or burdens we carry, to respond in faith. For us this Christmas, we're, we're not to despair or think in any way that evil is somehow gaining ground, but rather we're called and reminded to truly hope, to be filled with great joy. And as we hope, we struggle to labor quietly to form our children, the next generation of disciples. We work hard to teach our young people the meaning of that call of discipleship as we knew it in our own lives. And we give witness to our family and to our friends, to our co-workers, to caregivers, to all those that we meet. We give witness to them as we pray for conversion of our loved ones, and we pray for the strength to remain faithful to the Lord in the midst of any challenge or adversity. This Christmas, St. Joseph really is our model. is a model of quiet fidelity, of silent obedience, and a reminder to us all of the power of the nuptial union with God. This Christmas, remember that God delights in you. And receive that gift of hope and joy that comes in quiet fidelity, silent obedience, and nuptial union with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas.
together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended.